Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north, and for once, the sun's in my eyes. It is the actual sun, it's not a grow light. It's only 6 degrees outside, but that sun, as it's getting higher in the sky, is making it quite warm in here, which is excellent. Excellent news for the plants. So, it seems to be Dendrobium week this week, so we're going to do another repot of a Dendrobium. This one is called Dendrobium Sarnook Thailand Black. We'll have a talk about its, uh, its cur, and I also want to show you something that's a little bit strange that's been going on recently, and there's another thing I want to get to the bottom of. So, let's get started. Okay, so we're in. Now, first of all, this is the plant in question. So this is Dendrobium Sarnook Thailand Black. And before we tuck in to all the details about its cur, I just want to point something out. Can you see, can you see those lumps of soil there, or lumps of compost? Well, have a look at this. This is where it normally sits on this tray here. Uh, it doesn't sit here, it's over on the bench. But can you see these, these droppings here? And I'm pretty sure the droppings. Now because I knew I was going to repot it last night, I put it over on the tray here. And in the morning, sure enough, more droppings. So what's going on? Well I suspect there is a worm in here. But I'm going to have a look anyway. We're going to, I'll set you up, and we will uh, unpot it, get down into the compost, and see if we can find out what critter is causing these these droppings here. And just as I speak now, it's not 20 seconds since I told you the sun was in my eyes. It's now pouring it down again, and that's pretty typical weather for us here in the UK. Um, okay, so. I'm just going to pause for a second and then we'll set you up and let's have a look at what's going on in this pot. Okay, so we're back. Let's just get a little bit of this stuff out of the way so that we can have a good look here. And I'm going to need another tray to do it in. So I'm very curious to see what's been causing this. It's been going on for a number of weeks actually. Um, I've just been holding off because Dendrobiums really um, not the best time to repot them, but I've said on a previous one, I do it when I can do it, and it's the same with most plants. Unless somebody tells me it absolutely definitely will die if you repot it at the wrong time of the year, and um, people tend not to say that. Uh, so let's have a look anyway, and then we'll have a little chat about the plant itself because I'm just keen to find out. <laughs> what's in here. So here's the label. So Dendrobium Sarnock Tile and Black. Uh, purchased on the 17th of September last year, so it's one of my, my newer ones. It was in bloom when I bought it. I only buy these things in bloom. I've got the, it can, it says stay over five degrees. Now I've got a little bit of a, a contradiction here because I've got some other information but uh, I obviously looked up Dendrobium and it said above five degrees. It has been going down to eight, so it doesn't seem to have suffered so much. So let's have a look what the heck's going on in here, um, if there's a little critter in here. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. This is the beauty about not living in somewhere like Australia, where I'd be worried that whatever critter was in there was going to give me a nasty nip. Or even worse. In the UK, we don't have anything that does that, fortunately. That's roots are coming out. They seem to be stuck in somehow. They're not coming out of the bottom, but they're stuck in. There we go. Right. Hmm. What can we see? There's got to be some critter in there. Where is it? Well, I can't see anything. Every single day when I come down, there is something at the bottom, some kind of droppings at the bottom on a clean tray. 
So it's in here somewhere. It's just finding it. I mean, there's no major problem in having a worm in your compost. It's just that when it's in such a small pot, I mean, worms eat soil, don't they? They recycle it. And what I didn't want to happen was for that soil that it produces, these tiny little uh, grains of soil, it just go, it's going to just become more and more water retentive, and that's not what I want. So in other words, I don't mind worms, I just don't want them in my compost with my plants. So you can see where it's come from. Oops, there we go. You see the plug that it's come from. So I'm going to get rid of that and try and open it up a little bit. Hopefully without destroying the roots. I'm absolutely perplexed where this creature is. I was expecting a great big massive worm. I mean the roots are good, there's not a lot, but they're okay. A few dead ones. We will try and take ah oh, don't believe it. No <coughs> Jeff, you idiot. The one and only growth. Ah oh, well. I'm not keen to get to my worm. I mean, you know, we'll try and put a positive spin on it. There are other new growths. <laughs> it might be so early on in that new growth development that it might not, you know, it might still come and flower. It's like, kind of like uh, chopping off the, the tip of a, a daffodil. If you do it early enough in the year, then you're still going to get a bloom come. <laughs> we'll see, I guess. So I don't want to leave this sphagnum in because obviously sphagnum breaks down I and mean, then it changes the pH. And uh, that's not a good thing to happen. I think the ones, the roots in the sphagnum, you can see, are very dead. So maybe it's already happened. Who knows how long it's been in there. So while I'm doing this, Sarnook, you'll find lots of dendrobiums kind of prefixed with Sarnook. Sarnook is the brand. And the company, Sarnook, produce hybrids of dendrobiums. So there are lots and lots called Sarnook, Dendrobium Sarnook, and then they give them a name. In this case, obviously, it's Thailand Black. Lovely black flowers. I mean, you know, as black as you can get anyway on a plant. It's probably dark purple, but it's, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, it looks black to me. Okay. Well, again, I have no idea what's caused this. There, there is... Maybe it's still in here. Let's have a look if it's still in. There's still a bit of soil in there. I really genuinely expected this massive worm to come out. Well, something's caused it. Perhaps it's moved on to the next one, the next plant. But yeah, it was there. It was over there <laughs> overnight. I am just, it's got to be here somewhere. Wormy, where are you? Well, it's a mystery. Incredible disappearing worm. I mean, I would say those droppings are definitely uh, worm droppings worm casts but yet nothing and if it's not a worm there's nothing else in there well, I don't know I am at a loss okay well let's get back to it so 
I just want to get a bit more of this out if I can preferably without completely destroying all those roots in there seeing as I've uh, oh, I keep doing it off camera apologies I'll have to try and edit that so yeah Sarnook we've said is a brand brand name so they are the hybridizer apparently they're very open about which plants they cross it's no no secret and they give you some quite good care tips on their website the Sarnook website they give you some of the history as well it's a Thailand a Thai company they don't sell ties ties from Thai Thai from Thailand and they produce all these hybrids Th Sarnook in Thai means enjoyment or enjoy um, <coughs> Dendrobium apparently from Latin the Dendros means tree and Bios means life tree of life and it refers to the way that they grow on trees in Thailand but it was only in 1799 when they were first described to science and just looking on I think it's just these are just uh, webs from spiders not spider mites just spiders nothing to worry about it's a good opportunity to have a good look isn't it when you when you unpot it and get right down there I mean it's it's healthy but it's not you know it's not absolutely thriving is it it could do with a few more roots on it and it's certainly not thriving now that I've just cut off that new growth well, there's another one there there's a couple more there so it should be okay I'm a bit heavy-handed that's my problem so yeah uh, so first described in 1799 it's very important to the Thai people the dendrobium and um, they use it in religious ceremonies and festivals some of these roots are dead you can see when they when they get that, that little filament in the middle you know that it's no good see it comes off that's gone and probably a few more but I'm not going to bother with them there's not enough for me to, to worry about at the moment so dendros is tree bios is life um, Blooms last a long, long time on dendrobiums. They can last two, three months even. So what I'm going to do with this, similar to the other dendrobium that I did the other day, I'm going to get it in a, a clear pot so I can actually see what's going on. If there are any worms in there, they won't like that, so that'll get rid of them. Um, where the heck? It's hiding, if it's hiding somewhere. I'm still, I'm still completely flummoxed as to where it's gone. Something has caused it. Even last night, the plant itself isn't uh, producing droppings, is it? So yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So let's let's get the let's get some uh, media set up for it. So similar to my last dendrobium, I. I want a little bit of water retentiveness, but not so much that it's going to stay wet for ages. I'm going to put lots of holes in the pot using a soldering iron in a well-ventilated spot, don't forget. I am going to put bark in it, vermiculite, because I haven't got any perlite, but vermiculite does a similar job. And I am going to put a little bit of sphagnum moss in as well. Uh, I'm going to try and make it a little bit more free-draining than what we've got here with this kind of stuff I do understand and believe that dendrobiums these particular hybrids are not that fussy to be honest but I want to know especially in my climate that I am not over watering it and that root's gone as well isn't it look yeah I think more of these roots have gone than I uh, wanted to admit really I think yeah these are soft some of these Yep, gone. That's a blow. Well, that's another another indication that it was too wet. Hmm. 
I'm not going to take any more off. I'm just going to leave it like that. It's not going to. I know we all like to pull all these roots off, but it'll give it a little bit of anchorage. And I think plants are probably adapted to have dead roots underneath. I know sometimes we think, well, okay, we'll take them out, and and I and I do it like everybody else. It feels good. It feels good to do it. You feel like you're doing something, that's for sure. But uh, I think in some cases it might help stimulate, you know, by re removing the dead ones, it might help stimulate some newer growth. It might give some room for some newer growth of roots. It might do absolutely nothing. I don't suppose anybody knows. But uh, I'm going to leave those on anyway. So uh, I'll go and get my pot, get the media, and then... We'll have a look at what we've got. Okay, so this is the media I've got mixed up. So I've got vermiculite, I've got the long fibred sphagnum moss, and I've got bark. And I think that's going to give me just the right amounts of everything. Here's the pot, 11 centimetre pot. I've put some holes in it, I've soldered the holes in it. I must say I'm getting quite addicted to the smell of soldered plastic. I don't tell anybody. So let's get cracking and Pot it up. So I'm hoping that this is a, a kind of a mix that allows me to see whether it's drying out, whether it's ready to <clears throat> whether it's ready to be watered again. I mean these canes aren't desiccated, so it's obviously getting water from somewhere. Um, it did have a new growth that I've just destroyed. There's a couple of new growths there, but it's kind of stalled. Uh, it should at this time of year beginning to do something. I'm beginning to show me something. It could be the temperatures. I have got it quite cool. Now, talking of temperatures, um, Sarnook's website, I mean, they should know, shouldn't they? If they've produced it. So Sarnook's website say keep it at 16 to 25. So well, that's significantly more than the information that I discovered that said keep it just above 5 degrees. So normally, like a hybrid normally has a greater range so it would be odd for an ordinary dendrobium to you know be want to want to be kept above five degrees or be allowed be able to go down to five degrees but this particular hybrid to be at a, a, a higher temperature but as i say they should know shouldn't they so maybe if i put this in the warmer side it might actually start to do something better for me it's certainly worth a try i'm going to check that information again uh, just to make sure it doesn't like to go above 25 degrees I'll tell you this as I'm repotting it in here um, shouldn't be a very difficult repot seeing as there ain't many roots there but I know for sure and you've seen it you, you can mark the occasion that there was no bug in there or there is no bug certainly in what I'm putting back in here so I should not be seeing droppings on the gravel the morning after, should I? Uh, light, it's the usual. It likes bright light, but it doesn't like direct sunlight, especially, especially not in summer. I'm going to need to state this because it's quite wobbly. Bearing in mind that there aren't many roots down there. It's not going to stand up on its own. Mm, just about, but I think I'm going to put a stake in there. Let's have a look. Probably only need one. Well, these these pseudo bulbs are really fat, so I'm going to need a big. There we go. There's one already on it. Just there, ready, I'm waiting. There we go. Looking good. So it needs labelling. Needs a water. And let us carry on with our cur tip. So light. It needs bright light, but not direct sunlight. Temperatures, we said summer, Sarnock's own website say 16 
Celsius to 25 Celsius. Um, in winter, it can probably go down a bit lower than that. I mean, I've had it down uh, to 8 degrees, but it doesn't seem to have suffered from it. But having said that, the roots, um, you know, are pretty poorish condition. Some of them looked okay. I kind of almost didn't like to test them all just in case, but um, I don't think there was any new ones. Fertilising, only when it's growing once per month they recommend. I tend to do it probably every watering really, but as some of you will know, I'm not big on fertiliser. I don't put a lot of fertiliser in anyway, so it is very low, uh, low dosages. Uh, the watering, this is the, the thing that, well it's not controversial exactly, but this is the thing that uh, people tend to discuss quite a lot, this idea of resting dendrobiums over winter. Now Sarnock's own website do not mention resting it at all. Uh, what they do say is to water it moderately. And they say that it doesn't like standing in water, and that's what I've, I, my own experience has or will attest to. I am absolutely um, mad keen on making sure that these things dry out first because I think certainly in my greenhouse nothing kills orchids more than being overwatered and being wet for too long so hence all the holes uh, clear pot so I can see whether it's dried off or not I will put it on some stones like that to drain any water away and I can see at a glance whether it needs watering or not which is much better than what I had before um, yeah a word on the resting thing so what I do with this, I do rest it, but I rest it much like I rest all my plants. So if you think of it like this, as soon as it stops growing, if you can see it's not doing anything, if you can see it's not drying out at all, then why would you want to give it water? If it's wet down here, it doesn't need more water. It's already got the water and it's not using the water that's there. If you can see there's nothing actually happening up here, it's not growing, then you don't water it, you leave it. Once it's dry, then again, if there's still nothing happening, because it has these pseudo bulbs, it has uh, lots of storage in these things. This is what pseudo bulbs are for. They're not just for decoration, they are a storage organ. And it will start to produce some growth before it even gets any water. So just like most other plants through a cold winter, leave it until it starts to do something as soon as it starts to do something then you can start giving it water the exception to that i would say is if these pseudo bulbs start to show signs of shriveling if they start to shrivel then by all means give it a bit of water but don't absolutely drench it because it clearly isn't using you know isn't using up what, what's in that pot so yeah it does get a rest but I, I wouldn't say it's not one of these that you just stop giving it water and you do not touch it again you've got to get to know your plants pick them up look at them you know study them see what's going on and if you can see that it's, things are shriveling or something's starting to happen growth wise then it's going to need some water isn't it but even so you then do need to keep looking at the pot feeling the weight of it uh, and seeing whether it's ready for some more I think we're all guilty, well I am anyway, I don't know about anybody else, but I suspect other people are guilty of it too, that we feel like we need to do something all the time. Um, in many cases, the best thing to actually do is to not do anything um, and, you know, leave them to their own devices. I'm not saying don't water it, but, you know, what I'm saying is we, we tend to do too much. I do anyway, That's my perhaps that's my only, my guilty thing, I don't know, might be just me. So, that's... Like we said, temperature, watering, fertiliser, we've talked about the winter rest, uh, we've talked about when you water it again, if it starts to desiccate. Um, Sarnock say it should be five to seven months before it, it flowers again, and then you'll start to see nubbins on the canes and so on. Um, in actual fact, I don't think this is a, this might not be a nubbin sort of dendrobium, just looking at that there, looks like that was a a flower spike it looks like it's more of a spiking kind of dendrobium than a nubbin type of dendrobium okay so that's that okay so that's let's pick it up dendrobium sarnuk tile in black and i hope i get to see those black flowers again 
Um, I'm not the font of all knowledge on dendrobiums, as you well know. So please, by all means, put in the comments what your experiences are of these particular ones, the Sarnook hybrids. Uh, I've only had this since, did we say, last September. So my experience with it is very limited at the moment. I'll be very interested to hear what your experiences are or if there's a particular cur tip that I've missed out that you feel is very important. Stick it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. I don't care. I'm happy with either. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.